Hi, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to master the laptop schematic reading. So, let's get started. So, let's begin with the circuit. This is the first circuit that we gonna discuss. The circuit that is responsible to generate the plus 3 volts for the laptop motherboard. To generate this plus 3 volt, we will need many components. Okay, this is basically standard for all motherboards. So, as you can see here, we have the controller IC, as you can see. The first component is the control IC, so its reference in the motherboard is PU7. For ICs, you can find PU or U, okay? And here, this is its part number, okay? For example, if you have a bad IC like this, you should replace it with another IC with the same part number, okay? So, then we gonna need an inductor. Basically, we don't have here MOSFETs because this is just a small circuit, okay? So, we have inductor and chemical capacitor, as you can see. So, always the inductor and chemical capacitors are used for filtering purposes. The inductor also is used to increase the current in the circuit, okay? So, we have here inductor, PL9, okay? And here, this is chemical capacitor to make the signal or the voltage a filtered voltage. Okay, we have PC107 and we have other ceramic capacitors. This is basically ceramic capacitors. Those capacitors are not polarized capacitors. Okay, so this is the value, as you can see, for this chemical capacitor. We have 150 this U means microfarads, okay? And we have 6.3 volts, okay? And here, as you can see, this is the PGP means the pad. Here, basically, we use this as a test point. So, if you go to the motherboard, you will find many pads like this. This is basically a test point where you can check whether you have 3 volts or not. So, but first, in order to get this 3 volts, we need some inputs because the 3 volt here is the output, is the last signal that we will get, okay, or the final signal. But first, normally we should get many inputs, especially this IC should get many inputs in order to be able to generate the 3 volt. So, the first input is the VN, the working power for this IC, as you can see. So, we get basically, this is basically the VN. The VN basically is about 19 volts. You can find some motherboards with 20 volt, 15 volt, etc. But usually, the VN for laptop motherboards is about 19 volts. So let's assume that the VN is 19 volts. So the 19 volt will pass through this inductor, as you can see. So as I told you before, this inductor has as a purpose to increase the current, okay? And then pass through the ceramic capacitors. Usually ceramic capacitors are connected in one side to the power rail, as you can see, the VN on 19 volt power rail, and in the other side to the ground. That's why you should never get a shorted ca capacitor. If you test or you check any ceramic capacitor in the motherboard and you get a short or a low resistance or a continuity or a buzzer, means in that circuit, there is a short circuit. Maybe it can be the capacitor itself, it can be the IC, it can be the chemical capacitor, and so on. Okay? So, the 19 volt will pass through this inductor, and then will pass through these capacitors. This is basically filtering capacitors. Here we have the value for each capacitor. Here we have 0 0.1 microfarad 25 volts 
4.7 microfarad, 25 volt, 4.7 as we can see, and for this one we have 220 p means picofarad or or 2200 picofarad, 50 volts. Okay, so this is the reference for each capacitor. We have PC80, PC83, and so on. In the motherboard, if you want to check this capacitor, you should look for this reference, PC80 in the motherboard. Okay, so the 19 volt will pass through this inductor, through these capacitors, and then goes to this IC. So this is the first input, basically. Vn means the voltage input, the input voltage. So this is basically the working voltage. Without this voltage, this IC cannot be operated. Okay. And then we have here the power good. This P good means the power good. So basically, this is an enable signal. This signal tells to this IC that all powers in the circuit and around the circuit are good. You can proceed to the next step. If there is a problem in the power good, the IC cannot continue working. Okay? So this is basically the second input. So the VN, a very important input, and the power good. And here we have enable L. DO. This is enable signal. This and this are enable signals. Basically, these signals, as you can see, are coming from the SIO or the super input output. Because the SIO in the motherboard or the super IO is the IC, the first responsible for the whole power in the motherboard. Okay? So the SIO controls all control ICs in the motherboard. So enable always enable signals comes from the super IO. Okay? And here of course we have the boost, we have the VCC plus 5 volt, we have the V out. But the important inputs are V in, power good, and enable signals. Okay? F for this basically for this two pins we have this Mark here means no connection. As you can see, ANC means no connection. So after receiving the 19 volt and all these enable signals, so the IC then can generate the, this 3 volts, can generate 3 volts. And 3 volt will pass through this inductor. The current will be increased. And this is a filtering capacitor. And then we will get here plus 3 volt is 5, okay? So you can check this 3 volt here. Never check 3 volt here in the IC pinout because if you try to test or to check whether you have 3 volt here, you can make a short circuit in this IC. No, go always to the inductor and take a measurement or to the pad, to the test point, okay? So let's pass to another circuit. I'm going to show you many circuits in order to go deeper into understanding how to read the laptop motherboard schematic. Because if you understand just the working principle of how to read laptop schematics, you can read any schematic. Okay? Why? Because the working principle and the steps are standard. The same things. So let's check another circuit. This circuit is a very important circuit because we have many components including MOSFETs as you can see. So here our purpose is to generate plus 125 volts. Okay, plus 125 volts. So in order to get this plus 1.25 volts we need many components. The first component is to controller IC, as you can see. We have the control IC. This is the part number for this IC and its reference in the motherboard, PU11, okay? PU11. So we have the IC here, okay? Then we have MOSFETs, as you can see, two MOSFETs, okay? 
then we have the inductor always the inductor should be exist in any circuit we have pl16 this is the inductor that will increase the current for the circuit and then we have the filtering component here we have chemical capacitor pc162 its value is 330 microfarad 2.5 volts okay 2.5 volts and we have another ceramic capacitor over here okay so always as i told you before the ceramic capacitor is not polarized okay but for the chemical capacitor capacitor it is a polarized capacitor as you can see here we have plus here okay so then we will get plus 1.25 volt here you can check it in this test point or path so here of course we need an input voltage this is basically the vn this we have here vn means 19 volts okay if you don't find here a specific voltage means automatically the vn is a 19 volt so 19 volt will pass here through this inductor here as you can see we have plus v in ddr so this voltage basically is for the ram is for the random access memory okay it's for the random access memory here also we have the vtt as you can see vtt ddr vtt as you can see this is the voltage terminal for the ram okay so the 19 volt will pass through this inductor pl15 and then through this four ceramic capacitors okay and then will goes directly to the drain of this mosfet this is the drain as you can see so all these connectors or pins are connected together okay here we have the gate the pin number four is the gate or here we the mosfet to receive the control signal as you can see here we have the drive high because this is the high mosfet and this is the low mosfet we have here drive high for the first mosfet and drive low for the lowest mosfet okay so these two mosfets receives the control signals in the pin number four as you can see here we have pin number four and then the source of this mosfet as you can see three pins connected together connected to the drain of this mosfet and then the source of this mosfet pq35 connected to the ground as you can see okay so among the failure in this kind of circuit is this mosfet when this mosfet is failed or shorted as you can see here we have the ground so the power rail head will be short to the ground as you can see okay if this mosfet is shorted automatically this voltage will goes here will goes directly to the ground and here we will get zero we will not get this voltage then we have the short circuit so to remove or to fix this issue we should replace then this mosfet using of course the same reference or the same part number as you can see mdv1595 okay this is its reference so once 19 volts is here this mosfet will receive the control signal from the ic okay and then the voltage will pass here it's not 19 volt 19 volt here we will get here about 1.25 volt here why because this, the control signal controls the amount of voltage that will pass here and then of course this voltage will go and pass through inductors in order to increase the current and then pass through this capacitor the chemical capacitor in order to be filtered and then we will get here plus 1.25 volt you can check it here in this part using the multimeter or even here in the inductor so let's pass to the circuit that we gonna discuss here this is a very complex a very important circuit this is 
a CPU circuit or processor circuit. But please, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to like the video and share the video. If you like this kind of content, let me know in order to upload more videos like these videos. So let's continue. So let me zoom a little bit. So basically this is a very complex schematic, but we're gonna dive in and I'm gonna study it step by step. So this basically, this schematic has as a purpose to generate, as you can see here, plus VCC core. Plus VCC core is the working voltage for the CPU. Without this voltage, the CPU cannot be operated. Okay, so here this IC has as a purpose to generate plus VCC core in one side and also to generate plus VCC GFX. This is another voltage. This voltage is for the GMCH, the graphic card, the North Bridge. Because now the motherboards and the laptops become improved. And we find that in one chip, in one chipset, you can find the CPU with the GMCH with the graphic card integrated together. And of course, in some advanced chips, you can find four chips connected together. The CPU, the North Bridge, the graphic card, and the ICH or the third bridge. Okay, so this IC or this circuit has as a purpose to generate plus VCC core for the CPU in one side and plus VCC GFX in the other side. So let's see how. So of course we need always many components. The first component is the IC. This is the IC. This is the CPU controller IC. Its reference in the motherboard is PU8. This is its part number RT8172AGQW. Okay? So here basically we don't have two MOSFETs separated but we have a double MOSFET, okay? We have here a double MOSFET. As you can see, we have drain one, okay? As you can see, D1, D1, D1 means this is the drain for the first MOSFET. Here we have the gate, as you can see, gate one for the second MOSFET. So let's zoom a little bit. So this is D1, means this is the drain for the first MOSFET. This is the gate, also for the first MOSFET, and here we have S1, the source for the first MOSFET. So for the second MOSFET, we have D2. This is the drain, this is the source, S2, and this is the gate for the second MOSFET. Okay, and over here, as you can see, we have this MOSFET, or basically double MOSFET, receives two control signals. This is the first signal in the gate one, as you can see. Here we have upper gate one, and this is the second signal. We have lower gate one, so it receives two control signals. Why? Because it contains inside it double MOSFET, as you can see. Here we have the first MOSFET, here we have the second MOSFET. Okay, don't worry, I'm going to show you in a separate video soon how to test using the multimeter this kind of MOSFETs. Okay, so we have the IC, we have the double MOSFETs here. This double MOSFET are exactly like these two MOSFETs, but these MOSFETs are separated and those here are integrated together. Okay, so as you can see, we have the IC, we have a double MOSFET, we have the inductor, as you can see, to increase the current. We have PL12 always the same working principle. And over here, we have three chemical capacitors. Why? We have here three chemical capacitors, but in other circuits, we find just one chemical capacitor or none, because this is the CPU circuit. The CPU is the important chip in the motherboard. It needs 
an exact power okay an exact filter power that's why we use these three chemical capacitors in order to get a very pure vcc core okay so here of course we have the v in as you can see always the v in is 19 volts 19 volt will pass through this inductor and then through this filtering capacitors here we have the value for each capacitor and then pass goes directly here to this MOSFETs and of course goes here to do IC of course so it will goes automatically to the first MOSFET as you can see to drain of the first MOSFET okay and then this MOSFET, as you can see, this is the first MOSFET. It will receive the control signal. After receiving the control signal, as you can see, upper gate one, the voltage will be generated by the source of the first MOSFET and then goes to drain of the second MOSFET. And then here we have the source of the second MOSFET connected to the ground. So, unfortunately, for this kind of MOSFET, if you have, for example, this MOSFET is fed, is shorted, you should replace the whole MOSFET. It's not like this kind of MOSFET, separated MOSFETs. If this one, for example, is shorted, you can just replace this one. But this, no. But for this kind of MOSFET, if, for example, we have any shorted one here, we should replace the whole MOSFET. So here, as you can see, we, do we don't have the pad. You can just pick the measurement or check whether you get the VCC core or not above the inductor on this chemical capacitor. So basically, plus VCC core is about 0.7 or 8 volt to 1.1 or 2 volts. Okay? So to generate the plus VCC GFX, the same working principle, we have the IC. We have the double MOSFET here. Of course, here we have the V in the 19 volt. Okay, we have inductor filtering capacitors. Okay, we have the double MOSFET. We have the inductor to increase the current. And we have also here three chemical capacitors to get a pure voltage for filtering purposes okay and we will get plus vcc gfx okay so as you can see here basically this circuit has as a purpose to generate plus 1.05 volt basically this is the vccp power this voltage basically is for the gmch the ich and the CPU itself, the central processing unit. So, in order to generate this voltage, we need some components. Of course, we need a controller IC, a controller IC, as you can see. We have here APW8824. This is the part number for this IC. Okay, this is its reference in the motherboard's PU3. So, if you want, for example, to change or to replace this IC, you should look for PU3, okay? And then remove it, and then replace it with the same part number or another equivalent part number, okay? So then we have here, as you can see, inductor. Always you will find inductors in any circuit. And then, as you can see here, we have PR, this is basically a resistor. This kind of resistor basically is a current sense resistor. It's not a normal resistor. This is current sense resistor. And here, of course, we have some capacitors, ceramic capacitors. Here, we don't have any chemical capacitor, no problem. Okay, these capacitors are enough, okay, because we have just here a small voltage. Okay, it's not a big voltage. So, so here, here the V in, as you can see, is not 19 volt. Here, the first input, as I told you before, in order to generate the output voltage, we need some input. The IC should receive first its input. So the first input that we should always check is the V in. So the V in here is just plus 3 volts, is 5. 
Okay, so as you can see, so the in the output voltage here, okay, the output voltage here is the input voltage for this IC. Okay, so if we don't get this voltage, we cannot get this voltage. Okay, so here we have the Vn plus 3 volt. We should, if if you want to check whether you have this input or not, you can check here this resistor. You should find here plus 3 volt. Okay, or check this ceramic capacitor, or even you can check here in the pin number 4 of this IC, but avoid to check in the IC pinout in order to avoid short circuit. So, after receiving the V in, the first input, and then the power good, as you can see, we have here PG power good, and here we have enable signal, as you can see, then we will get here the plus 1.05 volt here. You can test this plus 1.05 volt in this resistor or over this coil. So that's it guys. If you like this kind of content, please don't forget to let me know in the comment below and I will upload more videos like this. And please don't forget like and share the video. So thank you.